Okay. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Selena. I am your holistic guide, GAPS guru. I like to talk about all things food, nutrition, emotions, and how to create a healthy home and lifestyle inside and out. And today I'm going to be talking about one of the most amazing ways that you can detox your body, especially on GAPS. That is coffee enemas. Coffee enemas are literally some of my favorite times of the day, favorite ways to detox. I literally love them. I couldn't tell you how much they've changed my life and changed my detox experience. If you haven't checked out my last video on water enemas, I go into a step-by-step -step process of how to do a water enema, how the whole enema experience works, what you'll need, the different materials and all the non-toxic ways you can make it safe for yourself. So I would really recommend going and checking out that video first, especially because I don't re recommend that anyone do a coffee enema unless they've done a water enema beforehand. And that's just because Dr. Natasha talks about how if you have a lot of crap up there and then you go to do a coffee enema that you can actually recirculate toxins to your liver. So you wanna make sure that your colon is completely cleared out with at least one water enema. Some people would say until the water comes out completely clear. I like to just make sure that at least one water enema happens before every coffee enema because I want to make sure that it's the most detoxing and powerful that it can be. But if you've been in the holistic health space for any period of time, you will know that coffee enemas are one of those really weird kind of niche things that some people think are really bad and some people think are really good, but they've been around for a while. So I want to explain in this video why I believe coffee enemas particularly are so impactful on the body and then how to do one and give a list of all the materials and things you'll need for a successful coffee enema. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you why I think that if you're sensitive to caffeine, this still can be a really, really powerful thing for you. So stay tuned for that, but let's jump into it. So let me start first by sharing what I believe the benefits to coffee enemas are. And the biggest benefit that I've seen and things that you'll see across all platforms, if you Google search coffee enemas, is that they are a very powerful detox for your liver. Your liver basically functions like a filter. It's, it's your body's way of filtering toxins. It kind of acts like a sieve, if you know what I mean. Like it makes sure that toxins don't end up in the rest of your body. So it's a place where toxins are filters. It's not where toxins are supposed to be stored though. So if toxins are getting stored there, there's so much toxins for your liver to filter that it ends up just getting clogged up and you will start to experience some of the kind of nasty sluggish liver symptoms like fatigue or brain fog or anxiety or headaches or all sorts of different things that can be associated with your liver just being clogged up with toxins. You can, it could be contaminants, it could be metals, all these different things can impact your body's way of functioning. And basically what a coffee enema does, different from any other kind of enema, this would not work with a water enema, is that it actually causes your liver to hiccup the toxins and wash them out when you release the coffee. It's not something that just any other caffeinated food can do. It's not something that, you know, black tea can do. A lot of people ask questions like, could this be done with some kind of like dandelion root tea or whatever? It does not have the same effect. There's something about the caffeine in coffee that actually stimulates your liver to cough up those toxins and detox in a very powerful way. So it's specific to coffee. And when it comes to what its actual effect is on your body, coffee enemas have been known for a while to be a very strong pain reliever. Honestly, people have been using it for centuries to mitigate some of their really chronic symptoms and pain in their bodies. So for example, people in war times when they ran out of pharmaceuticals, which there, that did happen at one point, they actually would use coffee enemas instead because of how strong of a pain reliever it was for someone who had even lost like a limb or something. If you've ever done a coffee enema, you'll probably know that there is kind of like this positive feeling that your body feels at the, after you've done one. It can be at least. It can also be a very strong detox, but the reason that people often feel this kind of euphoric, good feeling where there's a lot of pain relief is because coffee enemas actually stimulate your body to produce an antioxidant called glutathione. And glutathione is responsible for basically healing, but also helping your body to actually feel good. A lot of people will take 
glutathione supplements, but the problem with these is that they're not always absorbable, like readily absorbable, um, because they're not in their most natural form. But what a coffee enema does is it actually boosts your own body's natural production of glutathione by up to 700 times of what your body naturally produces on its own. So it's basically just giving you a boost of your naturally made glutathione, enhancing your body's capacity and ability to actually heal and restore itself. So I think that's kind of cool. But especially also when it comes to heavy metals, coffee enemas are one of the strongest heavy metal detoxes there is. And this has been really important for me on my GAPS healing journey, trying to kind of get to some of those underlying root causes. If you're trying to get there, I would consider working towards or starting coffee enemas because of their effect on getting rid of metals, which I have found to be some of the most stubborn root causes. And there are few things that actually allow you to pass metals safely, and coffee enemas are one of those. So again, this would be up to your medical practitioner and all that to see where you're at. And you know, it's a progression, so I, I wouldn't recommend just starting right out the gate with a coffee enema. I would kind of build with a water enema, but there is a lot of benefits that come with trying them out. I know personally, I've seen a lot of decrease in anxiety. My husband's also seen a decrease in anxiety. My mental state has been a lot clearer, less brain fog. I've seen less headaches, dizziness has gone away. A lot of these normal symptoms that are just kind of characteristic of like toxin overload in your body, coffee enemas can really, really help. Okay, so now I'm going to explain how you do you do a coffee enema in a way that's not toxic not gonna add more toxins to your body in the cleanest, purest way possible. And for that, you're going to need three ingredients. Besides all the enema supplies that I mentioned being in my previous video, to make the coffee that you're going to put in the enema kit, you're going to need coffee, water, and some kind of method of making coffee, so some kind of like coffee pot or something. There are specific things that all three of these things need to have in order to be the purest and the cleanest form so that you're not adding toxins again back into your body, which you don't want to do. And I'm going to start here with the water. So the water, like I said in my last video, it's very important that it's clean, pure water. I prefer spring water. I prefer spring water that hasn't been sitting in plastic, but I settle for that sometimes. Um, if you don't have access to a high quality water filter, like a Berkey with a fluoride filter, you are going to want to buy spring water. This is not something that you can just use tap water for. In fact, I know a lot of people who have had kind of rough experiences with enemas because they're just reintroducing toxins into the colon and that's never good. So make sure that your water is a really good source and if not, buy it from a store. And then the second thing is the coffee. So there's like a bazillion different kinds of coffee that people use for coffee enemas. And I will say that if you're more sensitive to certain things like mold, there are coffees that have been mold and mycotoxin tested that I will link below. The main concern that I have is making sure that the coffee is organic and that it's medium roast and that it is Arabica coffee. So you wanna make sure that the coffee is processed correctly and there's a lot of highly processed chemical treated and pesticides and all the coffee that we have nowadays, this is not a time to just go and put Starbucks coffee up your Make sure that your coffee is high quality coffee. I prefer to actually stick to coffee that is made specifically for coffee enemas. So the Gerson Protocol website actually has some really good brands as well as Aussie Health Co has a brand that's specifically made to be as pure and tested as possible. So I will link that below as well. And then you're also just gonna need some kind of machine or something to make coffee. But again, I want to emphasize here that you want to make sure that there's no plastic being heated up in the process of making the coffee. You're not putting coffee from a puree. You're not using these plastic cake cups, none of that crap. So you're going to need something that will allow you to have you know pure non-toxic coffee so that's that'll be stainless steel make sure it's stainless steel and glass so those two materials are what I like to stick to right now I'm using a teapot with a little stainless steel sieve inside of it that works great for me I've used 
French presses at times, making sure that you know all the parts that are touching the coffee are stainless steel. Um, the thing about French presses though is that you put the boiling water into it as opposed to boiling it, boiling the coffee in with the water, which apparently can release like some of the oils that are really good for coffee enemas. So I like to like boil it on the stove if you can. But again, use what you have, make sure it's not toxic, but use what you have. And then generally speaking, what you'll do is you will put three heaping tablespoons of the coffee in with a quart of water and you'll put that on the stove until it gets to a boil and then once it's at the boil i let it go for five minutes and then i turn the stove off and pour and strain the grounds once you've done that again making sure that it cools down to body temperature when you can spin your pinky in there for 10 seconds straight you know that it's not too hot for your colon some notes on making a coffee enema more or less detoxing. Um, even if it's just a cup of coffee that you're able to get in, like I said with water enemas, you can kind of build from just a small amount, get as much of it in you that's not too uncomfortable and build the amount from there. But a way to make it more or less detoxing is really the amount of grounds that you're putting per quart of water. So if you're starting out, you might wanna start with kind of more diluted water, so maybe two tablespoons as opposed to three heaping tablespoons and kind of build your way up from there. It will help you as you're detoxing to not go overboard and kind of to like build up your tolerance. And again, the time you hold it for is another way to make the enema more or less detoxing. So you're not holding it beyond what your body can handle, you're releasing, even if it's just for a second that you can hold it, you're building your body's tolerance so that your body trusts you and you're able to get rid of more toxins, your body can handle getting rid of them, that it gets rid of them at the pace that isn't overloading your system. Okay, and my last point, does the caffeine from a coffee enema stimulate your body in the same way that drinking coffee does? Now I would say that the answer is no. The amount of caffeine that your body absorbs from a coffee enema is so minuscule, like the percent is so small. So I do suppose it is possible if you are extremely sensitive to caffeine that you may be able to feel it, but this is nothing like drinking a cup of coffee. So if you're worried about that or if that's a concern of yours, definitely, like I said, go slow on the ways that you can you know, amp up the detox slowly. But I would honestly say that generally speaking, it's not gonna be a problem for most people. Most of the time what I find is people who have reactions to coffee enemas are either that it's not a clean enema. Like I said, those three things really matter, making sure you're not introducing toxins that cause your body to kind of be pushed too far. And, and then also, you know, the time, letting your body do what it needs to do. But when your body is detoxing a lot, you can have reactions that maybe feel like a caffeine aversion, but it's actually just the coffee enema detoxing your body. So if you've had a bad experience with it, Recognize that there's ways to kind of build your capacity to it in a way that feels safe and comfortable for you. But again, this is a time-tested way to detox your body. And people I know who are extremely sensitive to caffeine, I have a friend who can't even have like a nibble of chocolate without feeling the caffeine in her system. She did fine with coffee enemas. So be encouraged, this can be a good thing for most people. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you got anything helpful out of this video, like and subscribe. I make new videos like this one every single week and it's my passion to walk alongside people as they heal and grow. It inspires me and hopefully brings encouragement to you. Thanks for watching.